Good morning to you. Good morning to you. It is seven o'clock Central Standard Time on Monday. And if it's Monday, more than likely I'm going to be with you on Pray First. And I am waiting, hi Mel, to see who is going to join me this morning as we continue reading through the Bible. We are in Exodus chapter 33 this morning, and that's where we're going to begin. I've got my Bible. It is the message version, and we are just trucking along as we are reading about the Israelites and their exodus from Egypt. Good morning, Corrine. Good morning, Brandy. Good morning, everyone that's coming in. It is Turkey Week, y'all. Turkey Week. Do y'all watch? Hey, Marilyn. Um, do y'all watch the parade? Is that one of those things that you just have to do on Thursdays? Is that one of those things that you just like, it's not Thanksgiving unless you watch the parade. If that's you, hey Neil, give me a hashtag, yep, yep. Um, are you a dark meat person or are you a white meat person when it comes to turkey? You know, it might be different. Like, I like chicken thighs and chicken breast, but I'm, I don't know. I don't know that I'm really, but I do want some of that turkey breast. You know what I'm saying? Like I just want the turkey breast. Y'all, I'm obviously hungry this morning and I'm ready for some turkey. We will be traveling um, to see some family this week. So I would appreciate some prayers for traveling graces this week. And um, that would be amazing if y'all would do that for us. I had an amazing birthday last week. Thank you to many of you, if not most of you that, th that you know, wished me a happy, Happy birthday, and it was a great day spending some time with my family, uh, my boys, and my, you know, fantastic husband. So, dark meat. I'm seeing the dark meat. Hashtag live. Hashtag shared. Hashtag live if you're here at the 7 o'clock hour. Any other time, hashtag recorded. This is a conversation and a principle that we have Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. where we are diving into the Word, which we know is just full of pertinent information and history that is good for us to understand. So um, I hope that you are enjoying doing that with me, Dennis, and Ann. And um, you know, Doug's been giving us some um, some great Bible study, Bible um, lessons, conversations. I don't know what he would want to call it, but um, on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So anyway. Dark meat. I'm seeing all it. Give me a leg. I love it. <laughs> well, if y'all are ready, let's get started. I'm going to hit the, the the timer. And we, like I said, we are in Exodus 33. White meat. Hey, Donna. I didn't get to say hi to you yesterday, but I did see you. I almost didn't recognize you because you didn't have your, um, you know, your, uh, what's it called? Um, your hat, but it's signature. You didn't have your signature hat on yesterday. But anyway, okay, oh my gosh, I almost forgot. Hash, um, give the hearts and the likes and all that kind of stuff. We want to let everybody know that they're here, that are here, that they are welcome. We're so glad that you are here. If you are a new person that's just stumbled on upon this, hashtag newbie and uh, let us know because we want to say hello. Also, just for me personally, I would love for you to just um, you know, put some sort of comment down there, hey Brandy, or anything like that, so that I can respond back to you and tell you hello after this is no longer live, and I can go back and say hi back. All right, again, take two on let's getting started. Here we go. All right, chapter 33 of Exodus in the message. God said to Moses, now go, get on your way from here, you and the people you brought up from the land of Egypt. Head for the land which I promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and saying, I will give it to your descendants. I will send an angel ahead of you, and I'll drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. It's a land flowing with milk and honey, but I won't be with you in person. You're such a stubborn, hard-headed people, lest I destroy you on the journey. When the people heard this harsh verdict, they were plunged into gloom and wore long faces. No one put on jewelry. God said to Moses, tell the Israelites, you're one hard-headed people. I couldn't stand being with you for even a moment. I'll destroy you. So 
take off all your jewelry until I figure out what to do with you. So the Israelites stripped themselves of their jewelry from Mount Oreb on. Moses used to take the tent and set it up outside the camp some distance away. He called it the tent of meeting. Anyone who sought God would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. It went like this. When Moses would go to the tent, all the people would stand at attention. Each man would take his position at the entrance of the tent, of his tent, with his eyes on Moses until he entered the tent. Whenever Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud descended to the entrance of the tent and God spoke with Moses. Isn't that so cool? All the people would see the pillar of cloud at the entrance of the tent, stand at attention, and then bow down and worship each man at the entrance of his tent. And God spoke with Moses face to face as neighbors speak to one another. Y'all, I studied um, this a little bit um, back in 2012, and I was just, I'm so, this is a God wink for me that I'm getting to read this next part because um, I was so fascinated that, that that Moses was like, show me your glory, and God was like, I can't show you my face or it'll kill you. You know, you'll die. No one can look upon my face. And so, anyway, we'll get to that in a second. But this, it always makes me tear up. So if I get teary-eyed, then y'all know what is wrong with her. But anyway, and God spoke with Moses face to face as neighbors speak to one another. When he would return to the camp, his attendant, the young man Joshua, stayed. He didn't leave the tent. Moses said to God, look, you tell me, lead the people, but you don't let me know whom you're going to send with me. You tell me, I know you well, and you are special to me. If I am so special to you, let me in on your plans. That way I will continue being special to you. Don't forget, this is your people, your responsibility. God said, my presence will go with you. I'll see the journey to the end. Moses said, if your presence doesn't take the lead here, call this trip off right now. How else will it be known that you're with me in this, with me and your people? Are you traveling with us or not? How else will we know that we're special, I and your people, among all other people on this planet Earth? God said to Moses, All right, just as you say, this also I will do, for I know you well and you are special to me. I know you by name. Woo. Moses said, Please let me see your glory. And God said, I will make my goodness pass right in front of you. I'll call out the name God right before you. I'll treat well whomever I want to treat well, and I'll be kind to whomever I want to be kind. God continued, but you may not see my face. No one can see me and live. God said, look, here is a place right beside me. Put yourself on this rock, and when my glory passes by, I'll put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I've passed by. Then I'll take my hand away and you'll see my back, but you won't see my face. Chapter 34, God spoke to Moses, cut out two, ti two tablets of stone, just like the originals and engrave on them the words that were on the original tablets you smashed. Be ready in the morning to climb my Mount Sinai and get set to meet me on top of the mountain. Not a soul is to go with you. The whole mountain must be clear of people, even animals. Not even sheep or oxen can be grazing in front of the mountain. So Moses cut two tablets of stone just like the originals, and he got up early in the morning and climbed Mount Sinai as God had commanded him, carrying the two tablets of stone. God descended in the cloud and took up his position there beside him and called out the name God. God passed in front of him and called out, God, God, a God of mercy and grace, Endlessly patient, so much love, so deeply true, loyal in love for a thousand generations, forgiving iniquity, rebellion, and sin. Still, he doesn't ignore sin. He holds sons and grandsons responsible for a father's sins to the third and even fourth generation. At once, Moses fell to the ground and worshiped, saying, Please, O oh Master, if you see anything good in me, please, Master, travel with us, hard-headed as the, these people are. Forgive our iniquity and sin. Own us, possess us. And God said, as of right now, I'm making a covenant with you in full sight of your people. I will work wonders that have never been created in all the earth, in any nation. 
then all the people with whom you're living will see how tremendous God's work is. The work I'll do for you. Take careful note of all I command you today. I'm clearing your way by driving out the Amorites, Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Stay vigilant. Don't let down your guard lest you make covenant with the people who live in the land that you are entering and they trip you up. Tear down their altars. Smash their phallic pillars. Chop down their um, fertility poles. Don't worship any other god. God, his name is the jealous one, is a jealous God. Be careful that you make a coven that you don't make a covenant with the people who live in the land and take up with their sex and religion life. Join them in meals at their altars. Marry your sons to their women, women who take up with any convenient god or goddess and will get your sons to do the same thing. Don't make molten gods for yourselves. Keep the feast of unraised bread. Eat only unraised bread for seven days in the month of Abib. It was in the month of Abib when you came out of Egypt. Every firstborn from the womb of mine, all the males of your herds, your firstborn oxen and sheep, Redeem your firstborn donkey with a lamb. If you don't redeem it, you must break its neck. Redeem each of your firstborn sons. No one is to show up in my presence empty-handed. Work six days and rest the seventh. Stop working even during plowing and harvesting. Keep the feast of weeks with the first cutting of the wheat harvest and the feast of ingathering at the turn of the year. All your men are to appear before the master, the God of Israel, three times a year. You won't have to worry about your land when you appear before your God three times each year. For I will drive out the nations before you and give you plenty of land. Nobody's going to be hanging around plotting ways to get it from you. Don't mix the blood of my sacrifices with anything fermented. Don't leave leftovers from the Passover feast until morning. Bring the finest of your first fruits of your produce to the house of your God. Don't boil a kid in its mother's milk. God said to Moses, now write down these words, for by these words I've made a covenant with you in Israel. Moses was there with God 40 days and 40 nights. He didn't eat any food, he didn't drink any water, and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the ten words. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai carrying the two tablets of the testimony, he didn't know that the skin of his face glowed because he had been speaking with God. Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses saw his radiant face and held back, afraid to get close to him. Moses called out to them, Aaron, Aaron and the leaders in the community came back and Moses talked with them. Later, all the Israelites came up to him and he passed on the commands, everything that God had told him on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking with him, he put a veil over his face, but when he went into the presence of God to speak with him, he removed the veil until he came out. When he came out and told the Israelites, what he had been commanded, they would see Moses' face, its skin glowing, and then he would again put the veil on his face until he went back in to speak with God. Chapter 35. Moses spoke to the entire congregation of Israel, saying, These are the things that God has commanded you to do. Work six days, but the seventh day will be a holy rest day. God's holy rest day. Anyone who works on this day must be put to death. Don't light any fires in your homes on the Sabbath day. Moses spoke to the entire congregation of Israel saying, this is what God has commanded. Gather from among you on an offering for God. Receive on God's behalf what everyone is willing to give as an offering, gold, silver, bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet material, fine linen, goat's hair, tanned ram skins, dolphin skins, acacia wood, lamp oil, spices for anointing oils, and for fragrant incense, onyx stones, and other stones for setting in the ephod and the breastpiece. Come, all of you who have skills, come and make everything that God has commanded, the dwelling with its tent and cover, its hooks, frames, crossbars, posts, and bases, the chest with its poles, the atonement cover and veiling curtain, the table with its poles and implements and the bread of the presence and the lampstand for giving light with its furnishings and lamps and the oil for lighting, the altar of incense with its poles, the anointing oil, the fragrant incense, the screen for the door at the entrance to the dwelling, the altar of whole burnt offering with its bronze grate and poles and all its implements, the wash basin with its base, the tapestries hanging in the court for the courtyard with the posts and bases, 
the screen for the courtyard gate, the pegs for the dwelling, the pegs for the courtyard with their cords, the official vestments for ministering in the holy place, the sacred vestments for Aaron the priest and for his son serving as priests. So everyone in the community of Israel left the presence of Moses. Then they came back, everyone whose heart was roused, whose spirit was freely responsive, bringing offerings to God for building the tent of meeting, furnishing it for worship and making the holy vestments. They came, both men and women, all the willing spirits among them, offering brooches, earrings, rings, necklaces, anything made of gold, offering up their gold jewelry to God. And anyone who had blue, purple, and scarlet fabrics, fine linen, goat's hair, tanned leather, and dolphin skins brought them. Everyone who wanted to offer up silver or bronze as a gift to God brought it. Everyone who had acacia wood that would be used, that could be used in the work brought it. All the women skilled at weaving brought their weavings of blue and purple and scarlet fabrics and their fine linens. And all the women who were gifted in spinning spun the goat's hair. The leaders brought onyx and other precious stones for setting in the ephod and the breastpiece. They also brought spices and olive oil for lamp oil, anointing oil, and incense. Every man and woman in Israel whose heart moved them freely to bring something for the work that God through Moses had commanded them to make brought it, a voluntary offering for God. You know, and that's the difference between tithes and offerings. Tithes, just like Pastor Doug has talked to us about at Cross Point, and even on here, if I'm not mistaken, the tithe means tenth, and it's the first. It's the first of your increase, the first of your fruits, and you bring it back. It's not yours. You're bringing it back as an obedient act that God has commanded us to do, but it also comes with that promise, you know, that he'll pour out such a blessing on us and he'll rebuke the devourer and the blessing will be so big that we that we can't contain it. You know, but this is talking about offerings. This is talking about a gift and you hear them say that, that bring an offering and give it. It's a gift, you know. Anyway, I just thought I would, I would say that. Okay. Moses told the Israelites, see, God has selected Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. He's filled him with the Spirit of God, with skill, ability, and know-how for making all sorts of things, to design and work in gold, silver, and bronze, to carve stones and set them, to carve wood, working in every kind of skilled craft. And he's also made him a teacher. He and Holiab son of, oh, here we go again, Ahisamach, Mach, Ahisamach, of the tribe of Dan. He's gifted them with the know-how needed for carving, designing, weaving, and embroidering in blue, purple, and scarlet fabrics, and in fine linen. They can make anything and design anything. It's a weird place to stop, but it is time. All right, so we will stop right there at the, at the end of chapter 35. And um, we'll be picked up tomorrow in chapter 36. Don't you just love that? How um, he met with him. God met with Moses face to face. Like a neighbor. Like, like talking with a neighbor. Talk, and God talked to Moses like a neighbor. Like neighbors talk. I mean, that's just that's just awesome to me. And the fact that he he was like, please don't leave us, don't leave us. Like like wow, how amazing Moses knew the presence of God was. And guys, you know, we just take it for granted that we have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God inside of us. If you are if you have asked Jesus to be your Savior and your Lord, then He the Holy Spirit resides in you too. And we just have access to that. And I have to remind myself of that as well, that we have we don't have some piddly power inside of us. We have the Holy Spirit inside of us and we have um, not just the power, but we have that knowledge, that truth. And, um, you know, he's with us. He doesn't leave us. He's, he doesn't forsake us. And, and um, I don't know. I just feel like I needed to say that um, anyway. So, but let's pray. Father, Thank you so much, and thank you for letting me <laughs> read that passage. That just makes me teary-eyed um, of all days that I get to read one of my favorite passages, especially right there. So, um, other people may say that's a coincidence, but you know us by name, and you call us by name, and you know, and you care about 
what we love and what we need and, and all of those things. So, Father, I know that I'm, I'm not anything more special than anyone else. I'm just as special as anyone else that's listening to this now or later. And you care about them and you care about what they're going through and you care about their loneliness and you care about their overwhelmed anxiety or you care about their job and you care about um, their lack right now or the trials that they're going through, their sicknesses. You care about all of these things, God. And, and, I, and I thank you that they can come to you, that yes, you already know about it, but you want them to come to you and to talk with you face to face like a neighbor and um, anyway God thank you for loving us and thank you for thinking that we're special and um, special enough to die for us Lord so father we love you and I just ask that you just continue to be with us to give us that presence where we feel you in a real tangible way God and that that you would speak Holy Spirit to us and teach us and remind us of the things that you've already said and to to lead us into the future what we're supposed to do God and it's in Jesus name we pray amen y'all hashtag live hashtag shared and good gravy I was having kind of a good face day this morning <laughs> oh well oh well Anyway, I hope you guys have a great day, and um, man, I, I can't wait to see some family, some more of my family this week. I hope you guys have something amazing to do, and you know what? I know that we focus on being grateful this week, this month, but you know what? Um, it is so, it is acceptable and recommended to be grateful all year long and to thank God for the things that we have and especially when he answers a prayer you know the answers a prayer we need to thank him and be grateful and you can do it more than once I know um, my little one Jarvis um, when he got a bike last year for his birthday it taught me a lot about being grateful he said probably for a week several times a day Thank you for this bike, Mama. Thank you, Daddy, for this bike. You know, and then a little bit later, I, I just love my bike. And he just kept on and kept on. And then I was just like, oh my gosh, how many times do I thank God like that with such gratitude, with such, you know, remembrance? continual remembrance for the things that we have. We might say it one time, but just to, you know, every time we pick up the word, do we say, thank you, God, for this word. Thank you. I appreciate it. I thank you for meeting with me. Thank you so much. Thank you for my car that I have every, you know, do we get in it? No, we don't. And we take it for granted. Thank you for this house that I have. Thank you for this family and these, this church family that I have. Thank you for my spouse. Thank you for my children. Do we do, we do those all the time? No, but can we? Absolutely. So I just challenge you and myself to be a little bit more continual heart of gratitude, right? Can we have a continual heart of gratitude, not just when it's a specific holiday? <laughs> oh my goodness. He's just grateful all the time, Jarvis is, and, and what a humbling experience it is for me. And Boy, does it make you want to do more for him because he appreciates. Thank you for getting me the chocolate milk, Mama. I mean, it's just the sweetest thing. Every time you do anything for him, he is so, so grateful for everything. And I'm just like, God, I hear you. I should be more grateful for just the every little everyday things that I just take for granted. Thank you that I can walk this year. I couldn't last year. Every time I stand up. Thank you so much. I can stand up. You know, it's just the little things that we take for granted. But anyway, y'all be challenged and, gr and grateful. But love you guys. Y'all have a wonderful Thanksgiving week. And I will see you probably on here tomorrow texting with you. Love y'all.